Let's talk crochet. Hey folks, it's Mary, AKA Mercy Triumphs, and this is Slow Crochet. This is episode 068, and it is my weekly check-in, podcasty, what have I been working on, what am I excited about kind of video. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to show you is something that I just got in the mail today. This is from Hooked on Needlework from Miss Maya Lee, and her Etsy shop is going to be linked in the video description below. She is the Etsy seller who is so wonderful with supplying me with vintage boy crochet hooks. She has some other vintage hooks as well that you can find, and um, she has generously offered all of my subscribers, or actually anyone who sees this video, um, she's offered a discount code to anything in her shop, and that discount code is right here. I believe it's hooked on SC25. So when you go to Etsy, you make your purchase from her shop, use that discount code at checkout and you'll get 25% off that order. This is something that Miss Maya asked if my followers would enjoy and I don't get any kickback on it at all, but she just wants to offer that to you guys. And uh, yeah, she, she saw the need in having a supplier of good vintage hook for those of us who prefer the older ones to the newer ones. So yeah, find all that stuff in the description. But what did I get from her? I just got one more hook to, uh, to add to my collection up here. I haven't even gotten into this. So she sent a size G, which is what I asked, and along with it, beautiful cherry blossoms, sakura blossoms, and we have a yarn needle, and we have a little, little needle threader. Very helpful when you're, uh, <laughs> when you're trying to tuck in just the last little bits of your ends. And thank you for your continued support of my small business. Return customers are the best. Kind regards, Maya. She really is such a sweetheart. She and I have been going back and forth. She's She has a lot of great information about the history of boy hooks, and one of these days I'm gonna to have to do a dedicated video to it. All right, so here we are, very nicely packaged. <laughs> Yay, so pretty. <laughs> it's kind of the same pink that, well, almost it's like my skin color pink. All right, let's compare this vintage hook to the G hook that I was using. Oh, that's an H. Uh, let's see. Let's compare it to the more modern G hook. So here's the modern one, and it is a 4.25 millimeter, and it has the kind of the straight script. And then here is the vintage one. It's stamped G, made in the USA. I don't know. If, I hope you can see that. It has the more uh, the more cursive script on it. There you go. So here they are together, and you can see it's that same kind of trend, how the older boy hooks are cut in a little bit more, whereas the newer ones just have a different shape of a head, don't they? So I've really come to appreciate the vintage ones, and I've gotten several vintage boy hooks from Miss Maya. And truth be told, I know that hero hooks are kind of the gold standard in some ways. People just love their heroes. But I think, relatively speaking, if you can't get a hero, because those are pretty rare to find, it seems, uh, but if you can't get a hero, I think that the boys, the vintage ones, do a pretty good job. Now, this is an eye hook, and this is a G, so difference in millimeterage, but you can kind of see some of those similarities and differences there. And if you want to get more detailed looks at these, just see some overhead views of me looking at these hooks, you can look at my playlist of vintage hooks. I'll have that linked below. So thank you, Miss Maya. You are wonderful. I'm so excited to use this hook. And I just know it's going to perform wonderfully. In fact, I think I have a project in mind for it. Maybe even go down a smaller hook size than this. But yes, happy days. Thank you, Miss Maya. Smiley makes me so happy. <sighs> All right, so on to crochet. What have I been crocheting this week? Well, it's another week with no new starts, um, but I did have a finish. This is the Pure Innocent shawl. I did a small version of it, but I did get all of my colors in there, and I haven't blocked it, so 
I will, um, I'll have to show that another time. It's actually for another project and you'll see that video eventually. But it's just more of a small kind of neckerchief style. I really wanted it that way. And again, once it blocks, it'll be a lot fuller. Um, I do have a little bit extra yarn. I did play a little bit of yarn chicken and I was trying to keep my rows kind of similar, but um, I think I am gonna put some tassels just on the long ends, just cause I think that'll help it kind of weight down when I have it around my neck. So happy to have that done. I do need to block it, but yes, at least, at least one thing done this week. I've also been working on my little stack of sunflower-ish granny squares, maybe daisy granny squares. I now have 10 with a few more in process, and I think my goal is either 15 or 17. I need to nail down exactly how many I wanna do and decide which bag pattern I'm gonna use to put these together, but it's not something that's super complicated and it is slightly mindless. So now that I have my stack going, I am nearly there and hopefully I'll finish out the rest of these this week so that I can assemble that and have that one done. What else? Well, my cis shawl is coming along and this is something I have been putting a little bit of emphasis into, but again, it's something that I have to pay some attention to. I can't just mindlessly work on it. You guys have seen me working on this for several weeks now, but hey, I've gotten all the way through the navy, all the way through the kind of first band of yellow, and now I've just begun to get into that pale blue. So there are four strands here, and what happens is one at a time, the strands will change from one color to the next. So here is my cake getting nice and floppy, but we're through with the solid yellow. And so now we're into like the medium blue and yellow, and then it'll go into the solid medium blue, and then we'll finally go out into the beautiful pale blue. In terms of a pattern, well, first of all, um, this, so this shawl is super soft, y'all. This is my first time working with Pima cotton and it feels wonderful. I understand the hype now. Even though it's like a 12 row repeat, the first six and the second six are similar enough that it doesn't really feel that way. The only reason that it's a proper 12 row repeat is because the center sections and the edge sections are a little bit different. You have to distribute stitches equally for it to lay properly. So once you know what you're doing in that row, it can go, it can go a little mindless, um, but it's still something that you need to pay a little bit of attention to. I have made a few mistakes, had to frog back, and with a cake like this, I really don't want to frog because it's just awkward to do. But yeah, I'm loving how it's coming along and slowly but surely we will get there. The last project that I'm working on is my up and down pullover and this one is slow going. What I've realized is now that we're on the sleeves, it's not worked in rounds, it's worked back and forth. And so there's a lot of twisting and turning. But I did get the beginning of my sleeve going and I have a stitch counter here to help make sure that I stay on track. This is a project that we're kind of at a point where it's almost hanging over my head. You know when you get to that point where it's been a work in progress for so long that you're like, it's bothering me that I haven't focused on it more. So big goal for this week, focus on this more and at least get one sleeve done. If I can get one sleeve done or even if I can get started on the second sleeve, that would be amazing. Now, in terms of personal life, am I gonna have time to do that? Maybe. <laughs> um, spring sports have started. Practices are a great time for me to work on this. Even games, you know, because the players rotate in and out at different times. So this is my savior in spring sports, is to have a project I can work on. And I think doing the sleeves will be just the ticket. So yes, hopefully I'll get this done in the next couple of weeks. I feel like I say that every week, but I'm gonna do it this time. I really am gonna emphasize working on this project. So that's it for me this week. Let me know in the comments, is there anything that you're currently kind of having to motivate yourself to work on? Do you have these works in progress that are just calling your name and they almost get to this point where they're shouting at you like, why haven't you finished me? Do you find that you work well under that pressure or not? Do you go towards that and say, you know what, I'm gonna finish that so at least that project won't be screaming at me anymore? Or do you avoid it and pretend like it's not even there? What is your style? You know, we all have these different styles in our approach to this art and it's so interesting to hear from y'all just how we're alike and how we're different. It's such a beautiful thing. 
Thank you so much to all of my subscribers. I know we have some new ones in here. Hi, nice to see you. Um, thank you to everyone who's been with me from the beginning up to this point. Y'all are so amazing. I know I use the word wonderful a lot, but it is, it is a beautiful thing. I am full of wonder that I get to share my heart and my joy with you guys. Y'all understand in ways that most people around me don't. And it's such a beautiful thing that we can reach out to each other through this medium and connect with each other it is such a joy to me. So thanks for your comments. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being with me on this little YouTube yarny adventure. Y'all make my heart so happy and it's such a joy to be part of your lives. And if I'm not your cup of tea, thank you so much for listening this long. I really do appreciate you. I really do. And I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.